You know, between this movie, Teen Titans Go to the Movies, and the Lego Batman movie, I'm starting to think R-rated fourth row movies like Deadpool are in the minority. Ralph breaks the internet. Shouldn't it be Ralph wrecks the internet? Yes, yeah, since he is wreck it, Ralph. Uh, yeah, but break the internet, it's like a thing. Right, it's just wreck the internet kind of sounds better, doesn't it? Mm, you're not wrong. Hello there, everybody. It's me, the Canadian Rebuff, with a review of Ralph breaks the internet. Six years after the first movie, the arcade now has Wi-Fi. After Vanellope's game breaks and Sugar Rush faces Unplugged Nason, she and Ralph embark on a quest to the internet to find the missing piece. This is actually a pretty big milestone in Disney's history. It is the first sequel to an animated feature that is not straight to DVD, although most media outlets will ignore that in favor of Frozen 2. As far as the sequel goes, it does an alright job expanding the world and has some pretty good self-aware humor, even if the story does get a little bit predictable about halfway through. First off, I have to give a lot of credit for how they tackle internet culture. There's this website that is basically a mockery of YouTube trends, including Fortnite, unboxing videos, makeup tutorials, cat videos, and screaming goat videos. Now you may think, Fortnite? Well, that movie's gonna be dated in about a year. But that's the interesting part of it. Sure, it references Fortnite, but it also references screaming goat videos. And yes, while those are dated, they were popular at one point. Much like how Fortnite is popular now and it's gonna be outdated in the next few years. In a weird way, that's kind of what prevents this movie from ever coming across as dated. Yes, Fortnite and Go videos are a passing thing, but we're always going to have challenges and makeup tutorials and unboxes. Those are never going to get old. They have been there since the beginning of a site like YouTube, and they are still relevant today. One notable thing that I liked more about this movie than the first one was the voice acting. In the first one, I felt like they were just John C. Riley and Sarah Silverman voicing characters. In this one, it felt more as if they had gotten more comfortable in the roles and the directors allowed them to experiment with voices. John C. Riley has added more of a nasally accent in his voice as Ralph, and Sarah Silverman has sort of upped her pitch a little bit and sort of added that little squeaky girl sound. It shows how comfortable both these actors have gotten into these roles, and it makes for more convincing performances. I like the animation palette of this movie, with the bright colors and the unique designs of each site. And I like how they handle like, these little personas for whenever someone goes into the internet and explores the various sites. And also how they very lightly touch upon the deep web and the dark web as sort of like this criminal underworld. And the way they went about designing that little aspect gave it a very cyberpunk feel to it. I've always been a fan of cyberpunk, so I thought that was a nice touch. Yeah, the plot isn't anything you haven't seen in a Disney movie before. In the first movie, they talked about how Vanellope never really fit into her own game world, and by the end of the movie, they seem to have resolved that. But they seem to sort of resurrect that plotline with this one by introducing a brand new high-tech, carnage-filled racing game that takes place in a post-apocalyptic city. Vanellope, being of course sick and tired of everything that the Sugar Rush game has to offer, that appeals to her. But of course, that means she won't return to the arcade, and since Ralph likes spending time with his best friend, he doesn't want that to happen. So the story goes, friend A wants to go off into this brand new world and find a new home, but friend B likes the th way things are and doesn't want anything to change. Yeah, once you get about halfway and Vanellope starts developing this interest for this new world, you can sort of see how that story might go. Ralph Freaks the Internet is a good sequel whose quality is more or less on par with the original. Much like the first movie, it pokes fun at its subject matter and has a lot of fun with it. It does pose a conflicting question of whether or not there should be a third installment. On one hand, the original was thought to be perfect and didn't need a sequel, but they managed to give us one anyway, and well, it wasn't half bad. But the way things ended with this movie, it feels like they can just leave the series as it is. Regardless of whether or not we get a third movie, it was a good time, and I recommend seeing it at least once in theaters. Alright, that's my review of Ralph Breaks the Internet. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Leave your answer by commenting down below, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you're new here, and as always, this is the Canadian Movie Ralph saying I hope you had a fantastic weekend at the movies. See ya!